and welcome to another edition of Chinny Vision. This time, we're going back to the early 80s for some arcade action. Many people will associate Pole Position with Atari, but in fact, it's a Namco game and was licensed by Atari for distribution in the arcades in, in, I think, the West. So if you played it in Japan, it was Namco. If you played it in the USA or Europe or the UK, it was Atari. It was a really good arcade racer. Great sense of speed, wonderful frame rate. One of the first arcade games to have a 16-bit CPU. I think it was a 16-bit version of the Z80, a couple of Z80 processors in there. Some very early sampled speech, a little bit ropey. But overall, a rather good game. The place to start with an Atari arcade game is, of course, their own systems. And we're going to play this on my 65XE. You can select the track, you can set the number of laps. And there we go. The familiar pole position music plays as we're at the start line. The graphics are much simpler than the arcade, but the movement's really, really good. It seems to replicate that. The objects the primitive objects, the billboards, come towards you at a fairly smooth rate. A little bit choppier as you go up towards the corners, but still fairly good. No advertising, unlike the arcade. The arcade game was one of the first games ever to have actual product placement in it. Adverts for brands such as Martini flying past you as you played the game, but none of that here on the Atari version. There are, in fact, three or possibly even four Atari versions. Certainly, there's the Atari home computer version. There was also an Atari 2600 version. I don't have 2600, so we can't show that, which is very primitive. And the Atari 7800 version, which I do have, but I have no way of capturing for my 7800 at the moment because it's only got an RF output. And so if I did, it would look pretty ropey, so we're not going to bother with that. We've qualified in fifth position, done quite well. One thing to note about the version here is you pull down for low gear, and that speeds you up, and then you flip forward on the joystick for high gear, which is a little bit confusing to be holding a joystick backwards to go forwards, if you see what I mean. So we're starting the race in fifth position here. And as is usual with these things, all the opposing car speed away from you but actually it's not too bad here and you can overtake you can slide through the gaps nicely the collision detection is spot on they've gone to a lot of effort to replicate the arcade game sound effects are as you would expect in such a game oh just got past him around the corner and you get different noises when you hit the edge of the track oh just gotta be careful that you don't end up on the outside on corners such as that because there's always a billboard strategically placed for you to crash into as you come out of the exit so you gotta watch that oh i just hit him there no one to blame there but myself i could have avoided him around this corner it plays really well here on the atari a very good conversion i've got high hopes for the commodore 64 version it should be able to replicate the atari no problem at all the um, music here i don't know if that's because it's been converted to pal is slightly off it sounds slightly deeper and slower so i'm wondering if that's a conversion from ntsc to pal i don't know the graphics are slightly cruder here on the C64. Nice sense of speed is the... Oh, it's a little bit choppier. I was going to say nice sense of speed is... But that's actually the flashing of the road edges. Oh! There seems to be an almost second delay. 
between you moving the joystick and something actually happening. Certainly when you're turning, it's quite weird. You turn and then the car turns about three quarters of a second later. So qualified, and I can't say that was a particularly pleasant experience. Eighth here on the C64. I'd seen Tari scroll past on a Commodore 64 game. Um, of course, the, the two companies were mortal enemies. I'm starting at the back, and these enemy cars look very blocky. Oh, can I get past it? So it's a little bit difficult. The cars are slightly chunkier. And with those delayed controls there, why is that car on the left gone very slow? And why is it, oh, there appears to be a sprite problem as we went past there. The car disappeared. He never got larger. And then as the, the puddle crossed over, he just disappeared. And I started flickering. That was weird. Clearly some kind of sprite problem. The corners are very choppy on the C64 version. It's not fun to play at all. It's all very laggy. And it's not just the capture lag here that I'm kind of... I'm not used to, but I can factor in. There is a real delay between you pressing left or right and something actually happening. It does have the water on the track, though, so I haven't seen so far in the Atari version, which is certainly present in the arcade. The billboards look very rough as they go past. Why they're two blocks? Well, I say why they're two blocks like that. Perhaps they're sprites and they're doubled up there. It's, uh, it's all very rough and ready, really. Very difficult to control. I know I keep on saying that, but it's certainly not up to the level of the Atari version. On to the BBC Micro. Yes, the BBC Micro got a conversion of this. I wouldn't have associated Atari games with being converted to the BBC Micro. And this is actually an official Atari soft released. So again, a bit surprising. So how's this move? Oh, it moves well. Oh, this is, this is quite a surprise. Very detailed sprite, much more detailed than the C64 and Atari versions. It's moving quite well. Do we have good collision detection here? Can I squeeze through this gap? A little bit choppy as we get to the, towards the corner there, and as the cars get closer, they're a little bit choppy as well. The frame rate slips down. And the trackside objects, yeah, one, two, three frames to get past you at full speed. I, I, one thing I should say about the Commodore 64 version is it doesn't employ the same control system as the Atari version, that you just change gears up as you normally would with the fire button, just press forward. It's pretty similar here on the BBC Mike, I'm playing this with my master. No master glitches either as well. It's quite unusual, because you usually get something going on at some stage. Plays well, the sound effects are basic as you'd expect. It's quite fun, it's certainly better than the C64 version, not up there with the Atari, but not bad at all. And you can squeeze through gaps nicely and now we've qualified. So let's see how this handles in the race proper. This is of a much higher standard than most BBC Micro arcade conversions, it has to be said. And we're off to start the race. Oh, and I can keep up with the other cars as well. That's a nice touch. I'm not just speeding away. Can I squeeze through the gaps, though? The is the collision detection any good? Oh, I can't. Oh! I was probably chancing my arm there, I have to, it has to be said. A little bit of a shame those trackside objects are so choppy. The cars don't move towards you that slowly, it's just a little bit strange. It's not bad at all, it's probably one of the better racers on the BBC Micro. The BBC Micro version was programmed by Peter Johnson, who also programmed some Atari ST games, including Whizball and Arkanoid, which are also really decent ports to those systems. So this guy obviously knows his stuff. 
Not a bad conversion here on the BBC Micro, all in all. And a bonus, it worked perfectly well on the BBC Master. Atari Soft didn't bother to port this to the newly released Amstrad CPC, but they did port it to the Sinclair Spectrum. A full high score table, though. This looks nice, this game over screen here with the, the nice starting grid or the start line graphic. So I wonder if that's actually in the game. Select ZX. Oh, Select ZX interface 2 is control, and off we go. Again, the now familiar music and the prepare to qualify graphic. And here we go. The track's black. Oh, hang on, that just disappeared. I didn't just scroll, didn't just scroll out of view, it just vanished. A bit like the start of Outrun. Oh, yeah. Oh, the collision detection's spot on. The game drives itself. Um, I don't have to do anything to accelerate. Apparently I'm in low gear, the game's just steering itself. Oh, I'm steering now. But it just accelerates by itself. Um, this is weird, I need to change up. Stay in low gear now, and up to high. It's a really odd feeling to have a car accelerating by itself. Um, oh, it's... Oh, I've hit, hit him and then there's a massive delay. Oh, yeah. Why is the road black? The revs don't change in your car as well. It just makes the same noise the entire time. Oh... But you actually get proper adverts as you go past them, the billboards. I just saw an advert for Dig Dug. There's an Atari advert. The adverts go past as choppily as the BBC versions. In fact, slightly slower. But you actually do get adverts there. Namco pole position. That's quite nice. Massive colour. Cl oh, I've hit a billboard. I've played few racing games where it's felt I felt so much that the computer is controlling the car. There's a real disconnect here. It's accelerating by itself. All I can do is change up or down or brake. There appears to be... There's quite a delay between you steering and something actually happening. You really have to hold down left or right to get it to do something and to actually turn. It jerks along a fair bit. And there, there's a massive delay between you crashing and something actually displaying the crash. The first time I loaded this up, qualifying went on forever. Um, it stuck at seven seconds. I went past the finishing line and it never finished. So I had to abort and load up another image. And Oh, that jerked towards me there. That was three frames for the finish line to come towards me. Yeah, it's fairly dreadful. Let's see if the race is any better. There we are. We are in position... One, two, three, four, six, something like eighth or something like that. The car sprites are fairly detailed and they're quite close to the arcade apart from the colour. And there we go, we jerk past the start line again. That's horrible. I know it's 984, but that's horrible. You want to see that kind of thing done properly. Try WEC Le Mans, because that really does have a proper start-finish line like that. And of course, it, you have to mention that there are many games influenced by pole position for the Commodore 64 that game is Pit Stop and Pit Stop 2 both of which are superb racers and do this so much better than the home conversions but here on the specy no it's slightly garish odd colour choices why the row couldn't have been grey we've got grey on the the bits of the side of the road I just don't know I know it's 1984, but mm, might have been a bit more acceptable then, but today there's so many better races to play on the Specky. Pole Position, a great arcade game, in many ways ahead of its time and laid the foundations for so many other arcade games. On the Atari, it's a very good conversion of the game, very authentic within the system's limitations, moves really well, plays well, it's a really good game. Commodore 64 version should be a good game, but it isn't. There's that delay between steering, it's all rather rough around the edges and doesn't play anywhere near 
as well as it should do. And the thing is, on a system where you've got pit stop two, why are you going to play pole position? On the BBC Micro, a game not blessed with lots of good racing games, it's a very decent conversion. Okay, it doesn't reach the heights of the Atari version, but for a system like the BBC Micro that doesn't have as many colours or have the sound capability, or let's face it, have a plethora of good games, it's a very polished conversion and very playable. On the Spectrum, it's a letdown, I'm afraid. It's slow, it's jerky, there's a complete disconnect between what you do and what is happening on the screens. I've, there's few games where I've felt that if I, well, I did, I tried it. I let go of the joystick and let the game do its own thing. And it just ploughed on because it's accelerating without any input from you. It's fairly rubbish on the specy, I'm afraid. But if there's one version of this you've got to play, it's the Atari 8-bit home computer version. <laughs> 